smaller than the mainsail of an Olympic fin dinghy, but able to power Horonuku into the triple digits. The land speed power plant is explained by Tim Meldrum, Emirates team New Zealand's mechanical engineer. The wing's the only thing speeding us up, it's the engine. It's very similar to an aeroplane or, or a glider. It's like you chopped off half a wing on one side and literally stick it on top of the craft. It's fundamentally, it's, it's a wing section creating lift. We use the, the flap on the, the tail wing to change the main wing element's angle into the breeze to generate driving force. But the faster you go, the, the less of that you need because it's just gonna create too much power. So by having a tail wing at the back, it acts a bit like a weather vane, so as the, the wind direction changes slightly, it just automatically self-trims and feathers to the wind. If we were to trim the wing with a conventional main sheet, it would take a lot of energy and a, a lot of focus from Glenn. We don't have stored energy on board, so with quite low energy input and without taking his hands off the steering wheel and concentrating on where he's going, he can you know, very easily trim the wing. The wing itself, Southern Spars manufactured for us. We have to size the wing mostly optimised for its top speed. The size of our wing is um, 10 square metres, so that's smaller than the mainsail on an Olympic fin dinghy. And we're only allowed to push start by human beings, so we're, we're trundling off pretty slowly to begin with. It's all about trying to ramp your acceleration curve all the way up through the speed range and climb up over that existing record of 203 k's an hour. It sounds easy to keep accelerating like that, but with the way that we encounter increasing resistance, Richard Jenkins did a very impressive job to put another 15 odd kilometres per hour on top of the record before that. And you know, from what we know, that, that's a pretty big number in terms of a speed improvement. And it's gonna be a really big mountain to climb to get above that 203 kilometres per hour mark. And while we've learned a bit in testing here, we, we haven't had the luxury of traveling at those speeds yet. So there's a lot of unknowns out there for us. This is your weekly sailing highlights show, The World on Water, July 1, 2022. Thousands of sailors have taken to the water for the Isle of Wight's 91st annual Round the Island race. Organizers said more than 1,100 boats were entered into the event, which sees competitors of all levels take on the route of 50 nautical miles. The Round the Island race is so special because it gets people on the water. It's a fantastic day out, it's really inclusive, everybody can come and have a go and I think it's just a brilliant way of introducing people to our sport. I think the favourite moment for me was going around the needles and looking back, which you're not supposed to do when you're on the helm obviously, but looking back and just seeing just hundreds of boats just piling round that, that, that turn, that sharp turn, and, the, and seeing the white cliffs there, and obviously needles are an iconic sort of landmark in England, so I think just seeing that was, was, beyond, my, was beyond my expectations, so that was fantastic. Today's adventures here, <laughs> including lots of tacking going up to the needles. And then a, a bit of a, 
a drift going down to St. Catharines with uh, people feeding fish as per normal and the lumpy Lots weather. Of fish. <laughs> and then we got the kite up going around uh, yeah, Ventnor and all the way up to Ride Sands. Mainly windy, mainly really breezy for the majority of the race. Had a couple of scary uh, spinnaker moments, <laughs> but it was all good. I think this is about my, it's either my fourth or fifth time. We do this every year, we've been doing it for 12 years and you know, we'll never stop doing it. it it's just everything and about The Island you know, Sailing Club put on such a great event, so uh, it's always worth coming to support. It's just a great adventure. It's a very tactical race and we always enjoy just coming back, seeing if you can do that a little bit better and sometimes you do and sometimes you don't and it's just great being with your friends and sailing and seeing everyone. I've done the race probably about 17 times or something. So yeah, different every year. On Dark and Stormy, we had a pretty quick rounding. It was a very fresh day. We saw 20 knots plus some big waves around the back of the island. It's, you know, it's blue water, bright skies, water flying everywhere. You know, it was a fantastic day out, it really was. To come home first and see the whole fleet behind you is a pretty cool experience. Racing in winds, which were much lighter than Cascade, has built its reputation for Doug Devo's US flagged quantum racing, which has the early lead in the Rolex TP52 World Championship, after opening with two second places. Welcome to Cascais in Portugal. It's the first day of the Rolex TP52 World Championship, Cascais 2022. Forecast is for 9 to 16 knots of breeze. Sled go on the water as champions. Quantum have won here twice before and uh, there's a number of boats that, which could win. It's going to be a great week finishing with strong breezes, but it could be light to start with. It doesn't really affect us at all. I mean, you come here expecting breeze and, and so you have to change that mentality. It's beautiful sailing conditions. We are prepared for every condition. We are not under pressure. The other guys are under pressure because we won two in four years. So we take it super easy and having fun on the water. It's the start of a long event. You'd probably put the favourites as Quantum and Platoon and then maybe us and Sled as good chances also. So um, probably the underdogs slightly. I haven't been in that role too much lately, so I'm, I'm pretty pleased with that. So race one, the breeze is eight to nine knots on the start line. It looks like the early right is good. We see Provetza and Gladiator out there in particular with an early lead, but it's the top third of the beat where the left comes in strong. Allegra, Vayu and Quantum all on that side. Round the top mark, it's Allegra, Vayu, Quantum. Down the first round, that stays the order. Then on the second beat, Quantum Racing get through Vayu and at the finish line, it's Allegra winning the first race of the World Championships, Quantum Racing in second and Vayu in third. Just a little bit more breeze for the start of the second race, maybe 10 knots, uh, still flat, flat water and a good start from Quantum Racing. Phoenix are over the start line and have to restart, recross, but at the top mark it's Quantum making good from that uh, lead off the start line. They lead round the top mark with Sled in second and Platoon in third, but down the first run, Quantum Racing jibe off early, Sled stay right down the run and lead round through the leeward gate and all the way to the finish, it's a win for Sled. Quantum Racing gets second, Platoon third. We were right in the mix, and of course, with a penalty in this strong feet, it's difficult just to fight back. But we didn't let us go, and we were full of energy, and so we raced nicely in the second race. So we're, we're happy. Luckily, uh, we managed to uh, survive the day and had two, two second places, which is a really good start. We came out there with the goal of getting to the last day with a chance to win, and we accomplished that today. So the standings after three races, Quantum Racing lead the World Championships on four points, Platoon in second on eight, Phoenix also on eight, and Sled on nine. That's it for the first day in Cascais at the Rolex T52 World Championship. Quantum come away with the lead, two good second places, very close behind them, but it's going to be a long week that's only going to get windier.
The weather gods had little in mind for the sailors at the start of the Olympic part of Kiel week. Because the sun hid for too long, the thermal easterly wind did not build up. We have the day five highlights. Spectacular sailing in perfect conditions today on the Kiel Fjord. The warm sunshine created the opportunity for a strong and stable sea breeze. The breeze blew nicely across the TV course, much to the delight of the NACRA 17 and the IQ foilers who put on a great show of high speed racing. First real day of sailing for the Olympic classes and a taste of what the Olympic sailing program has in store for the coming years. Foiling is the magic word where the water resistance of a whole boat is reduced to ski-sized runners that the catamarans or windsurfers use to glide across the water. First up with the mixed class NACRA 17 catamarans. This is a boat that has been technically updated for Paris 2024 after two evolutions already for the 2016 and 2020 Olympic cycles. New technical territory then for the many top athletes competing in Kiel. The Italian Olympic champions from Tokyo, Ruggiero Tita and Caterina Banti, have found early mastery of the newly improved boat. On the upwind course, the Italian team mostly managed to keep the 5.2 meter catamaran on the foils. Great boat speed along with spectacular boat handling, delivered three solid race wins in a row, putting the Italians firmly in the lead ahead of their fellow teammates Vittorio Bissaro and Mael Frescari. Yeah. Behind the Italians, the reigning world champions John Gimpson and Anna Burnett also showed how to get the best out of this revised NACRA 17 setup. With four of 12 qualifying races now completed before the medal race on Sunday, the British team is coming third in the standings. The German Olympic bronze medalists from Tokyo, Paul Koloff and Alisa Stulema, put on a mixed performance when measured against this team's high expectations. Both high and low points alternated over the four races today, at the end of which the Germans find themselves in eighth place overall, with a clear gap already to the top. Pure action followed in the new Olympic class, the IQ foilers, wind surfers gliding gracefully on foils above the surface of the water. Master of her profession is the German Lena Erdil from the Norddeutsche Regattaverein in Hamburg, who won all her races today. In the men's class, it is Sebastian Kerdel, also from the NRV, who leads the field after two victories and two second places. Following this spectacular start to the Olympic program today, sailing fans can look forward to watching the 49er FX skiff tomorrow, which will have its day in the spotlight of the media course at Kiel Week. Quantum Racing on Day 3 returned a second and a sixth to finish the day with a two points lead at the top of the Rolex TP52 World Championship. Well, it's the third day of racing here in uh, Cascais at the Rolex TP52 World Championships. A slow start to the day, a light breeze is first thing in the morning. We've got a small delay. We should go racing later on in the afternoon. Eight to nine knots of breeze, something like that, but still light, still waiting for the big winds. Looks that we will have wind, but later on, from two or three, a kind of sea breeze coming from west, and we are planning to race, but quite late. In general, we have always the northwest, the strong wind, big waves. It's not happening yet. Hoping for two races late in the day, I'd say best breeze between three and 5.30. Starts at, say, 2.45, 2.50, 6 to 8. Clock's right, hopefully 8 to 10, maybe 11 knots, 265, 270 by 5 o'clock. Well, after a delay, race number five gets away in seven to eight knots of breeze. Uh, Prevets a start nicely towards the committee boat end of the line. Phoenix uh, come off the line towards the pin end in the middle value. And that's the order at the top mark. It's Phoenix leading, Prevets a second. Quantum come away nicely towards the top of the beat, get round in third with value in fourth. Phoenix uh, extend and win their uh, first time at this regatta. Second, Prevets a third, Quantum and fourth across the line are value.
Second race, the breeze has shifted more to the right and off the start line, Allegra, Sled and Vayu are the first to that right side. That pays off round the top mark. Allegra leading from Vayu and Sled. Allegra jibe off. Quantum stay right down the first run and lose out. And at the leeward gate, Phoenix impede Prevetza and have to do turns and that really does cost the team which won the previous race. So through the finish line, it's Allegra winning. Vayu get through Sled for second place. Sled get third. Quantum are down in sixth. Their consistency just away wavering slightly and Phoenix that penalty turn costing them dearly. Our conclusion is we're still alive <laughs> right you know you're still we're hanging onto that cliff by our fingernails but there's a lot of racing to go there's four more races you got to race every race and everyone's racing you know to win and, and it's all wide open still. We had a stunning day amazing racing and it just sort of clicked today it's really nice good racing and we finally found, found some speed we've been struggling a little bit. Yeah well, we've been working with the, the quantum guys they've given us a lot of uh historical data. They've obviously got a lot and they've brought us up to speed and uh, it's been invaluable to us. Standings after six races. Well, Quantum Racing lead on 18 points. Vayu second on 20 points. Third, our platoon on 23 points. Well, we had to wait for the breeze today here at the Rolex TV Do World Championship. We've got two good races away, two different uh, winners, but as ever, really consistency has been key and really they saw a number of teams having highs and lows today, but uh, still got two days of racing left. Who's going to be the champions come Saturday? It's still wide open. While Ernesto Bertarella's Alinga Red Bull racing team has topped GC32 competition for many years, they are now focused on their 37th America's Cup training program and so are fielding two teams on the GC32 racing tour. It was a great day for uh, GC32, nice offshore wind, very shifty conditions. It was a very open racetrack. There was a lot of changes in the, in the rankings during the races. We sailed a bit better than yesterday. We're still uh, learning a lot. We even won our first race, so that was uh, positive. It was really shifty today. Uh, we lost a lot on the three first races and uh, the last two were way better. Uh, I think we, we understand a little bit more the tactics here. The winner of the 2022 Von D Arctique race was Charlie Dalen, a Pivia, who signed his second consecutive solo victory in this Amoka season. And the rest of the podium was Jeremy Bayou with Cheryl and Thomas Ruyant blinked out. C'est vrai que je commence tout juste à réaliser que je l'ai remporté, qu'on l'a remporté avec Apidia, qui est ce passage de ligne virtuel et puis après l'annonce de, de, de la victoire et voilà, je ne me rendais pas du tout compte de, de rien et voilà, là, ça, là, ça, ça y est, je commence un petit peu à me rendre compte. <rire> avec les quatre jours intenses quoi, comme, comme souvent avec, euh, avec Charlie et puis, euh, et puis Thomas on ne s'est pas beaucoup lâché ça, euh, ça a été super intense donc, euh, donc voilà c'est vraiment ce qu'on vient chercher et, et on l'a trouvé sur cette ouverte Bravo Jérémy super Merci. félicitations Merci. et donc c'est euh, une, euh, une belle course quoi. et puis après ben, d'être sur le podium euh, euh, moi c'est quelque chose euh, dont je ne me lasserai jamais j'aime bien le goût du champagne ce bateau là aime bien le goût du champagne aussi super. Un beau match, euh, un Charlie euh, impérial. Je suis content de l'énergie mise dans, mis dans la course après pas mal, euh, pas mal de petites erreurs. 
voilà, sur des, des, des petits points clés de la course. On va essayer d'encore progresser pour essayer de, de renouveler euh, voilà, des, arrivées en, des arrivées en tête. C'est tout, ce tout ce que je souhaite à tout ce que je me souhaite, ce que je souhaite à l'équipe. Cascade remains one of the most rewarding venues for the quantum racing team, as Doug Devo's US flagged crew today won the 2022 Rolex TP52 World Championship title, making it their third back-to-back -back regatta win on the Atlantic waters off the Portuguese coast. So it's a big Saturday showdown, the title showdown for the Rolex TP52 World Championship. It's all on the line today, we've got a good breeze coming in back to what we've all been waiting for, the Cascais conditions. A little bit of a battle, I think, between uh, Quantum Racing and Platoon, both past world champions. It's going to be fantastic. It will be a tough day because uh, a lot of boats we are on the game. Um, we are close to Quantum, but other boats are close to us, so it will be a big fight. But the important thing is to remember how to sell the Cascais, uh, Cascais days with big waves and big windy. We're feeling really good. We came here for good breeze in Qashqai and unfortunately the last four days we haven't really had it. But we survived, we're, we're holding on. But we have two more races. As you saw yesterday, anything can happen. So we're going to go out, have some fun, give it our best and see what happens. Race 9, the breeze is up. Cascais is finally delivering 19 to 22 knots of wind on the start line from the northwest. The swell is building in a great climax to the regatta. Platoon look best off the start line. Time on distance towards the pin end of the line. They are over the top of Quantum uh, early on. But the race is to get to the right. It's a really typical Cascais race course. Quantum get inshore and get the pressure and the shift that they just turbocharge past Platoon and put Allegra in between them down the uh, run and the win is with the Quantum racing their first win of the regatta second race the breeze is much the same perhaps just a little bit more wind uh, on the start line allegri can make a really nice start off the pin end of the line and they get the early lead up the first beat into lodge and Pavetza and sled all go to the right get out to the right early at the top mark that's the lead with allegri and uh, Pavetza doing nicely down the first run but phoenix bayou quantum and platoon all get closed out and uh, are deep 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 coming round the top mark but uh, down the first run Provetza stay left and take the lead at the lured gate the platoon there uh, right down at the back of the fleet quantum racing just a one place ahead of them and through the finish line well it's a win for Provetza but quantum racing take the world championship with platoon behind them we got a couple of breaks in there to stay in the game you know we could have sailed better and hats off to quantum because they sailed fantastic <laughs> You kind of take the good with the bad and, and you know it's ironic because I'd say the previous four days we started really well and today we didn't start great we were probably a bit conservative we all have right on the brain but how you get there is the tricky part and um, I you'd give Allegra and Platoon high marks for just backing themselves there. Doug brings a different dynamic to the boat and to the team to be able to share this with him is awesome. It just felt great to be on board. For many years, I, you know, there would be world championships that I couldn't attend, and the team would sail and did well. But for the opportunity to, to be on the boat to sail in a championship, the, the Rolex championship is just uh, pretty special. And to, to win, it's been fantastic. So the final standings, Quantum Racing win on 33 points. Second, our platoon on 40 points. Allegra on 41. Phoenix, 42. Sled on 44 in fifth. The 52 Super Series standings after two regattas, Quantum Racing lead on 52 points, second our Platoon on 66 points, third our Phoenix on 69 and Allegra fourth on 84. So in the end of great week's racing here in Cascais, light wins for most of the week and a big finale, 2025 knot breezes on the final day, Quantum Racing coming out on top but it's been a fantastic week and for sure we're going to be coming back to Cascais.